good day everyone so uh, now we will uh, discuss about uh, how to uh, generate a sine wave using the dac of uh, <coughs> arm 7 processor so uh, first we will uh, try to do it with uh, uh, not considering about the frequency then we'll enter into how to do it with uh, exactly like 50 hertz so 50 hertz a sine wave will be generating from the DAC <coughs> so let us get into the program so I'll change the program yes this is the program so uh, in this program uh, the actually the basic algorithm is like uh, we'll have to uh, first uh, sample the whole sine wave and then we'll have to put it as a uh, uh, data and uh, from the data each and every time we'll be fetching the data and putting it in the DAC that is the algorithm so <coughs> as far as uh, uh, this particular program is concerned uh, the program is bit simple but we need to know how to uh, sample the sine wave so first we'll uh, discuss about uh, sampling the sine wave then we'll enter into the uh, logic of the program so coming to the sine wave so as far as uh, the sine wave is concerned um, the sampling is very important so as far as this program is concerned we are uh, making it like uh, 30 degree so for each and every 30 degrees uh, I'll uh, be taking the samples and I'll be putting it in the output so obviously the waveform will look like this it won't be looking like pure sine wave but anyway so in case if you go for <coughs> decreasing the values of the um, degrees obviously the sine wave will uh, look much more smoother so as far as uh, this is concerned so uh, I'm going to sample at 30 degree then 60 degree 90 degree 120 degree so you can see like uh, till 30 degree it will be staying here and uh, after that from 30 degree it will go in this uh, way and uh, 60 degree and from 90 degree so uh, it uh, follows like a stepped waveform so but uh, it resembles a sine wave so <coughs> in this uh, uh, waveform one thing we should understand as far as the DAC is concerned we can't get a uh, negative so we'll what we'll do is we'll uh, keep the zero as the uh, negative maximum while the positive value as the uh, I mean the maximum value is the positive maximum so in uh, in a sense like uh, <coughs> uh, if I keep the reference voltage of the DAC as 3.3 3.3 will be the 3.3 volt will be the positive maximum while the half of 3.3 is like uh, uh, um, 1.65 <coughs> that happens to be the half of uh, the 3.3 volt so that happens to be the zero so that will we are going to assume it as a zero voltage while the um, real zero voltage will be assuming it as negative maximum so we are going to sample with this assumptions kept in our mind so as far as uh, uh, this particular sine wave is concerned as I've already told you first we need to sample for zero degree zero degree in the sense it's a uh, sine zero is zero so sine zero is zero and as I've already told you we are going to assume 3.3 .3 volt as the <coughs> maximum voltage so 1.65 will be the half of this uh, sine wave so 1.65 is going to be uh, from here to here again so 1.65 is going to be the uh, zero line so 1.65 so it's uh, equivalent uh, hexadecimal value that whatever we are going to put is 1 ff so let us uh, see uh, I mean as far as this 1 ff is concerned how this is obtained is like uh, uh, you know I mean uh, as far as this uh, DAC concerned uh, it is like a 10 bit DAC in 10 bit DAC uh, the maximum value is 3 ff so the half of 3 ff is 1 ff so directly we can put the value for the 0 degree as 1 ff so 1 ff is half of 3 ff 3 ff will be equivalent to 3.3 .3 volt <coughs> so um, inside the program uh, we can't be representing anything with the uh, with regards to the voltage everything has to be represented in terms of hexadecimal values only so that we'll have to keep it in mind but uh, after we have put 
that value its equivalent uh, output will be decided depending upon the reference voltage reference voltage we are going to keep it as 3.3 volt that uh, we will have to keep it in mind. So for 0 degree of sine wave it is taken at exactly the half of the maximum voltage that the DAC can give us the DAC uh, I mean uh, so whatever the value that uh, you put in the DAC register so which is uh, basically a 10 bit DAC so it is going to be 3 FF so half of the value is 1 FF so you can uh, calculate and check so half of uh, 3 FF is 1 FF <coughs> And as I've already mentioned, the reference voltage we are uh, going to keep it as 3.3 volt, and hence the half of the 3.3 volt will be 1.65 volt. So for zero degree, one FF is taken. Coming to the next value, 30 degree. So that sine 30 is 0.5. <coughs> so uh, as far as this 0.5 is concerned, we need to uh, I mean if we want to find out what is the value of the voltage, it is equal to 2.475. So this uh, you can just find out with this formula 1.65 plus 1.65 into sine theta. So 1.65 into uh, 0.5 whatever the value that comes will be added with 1.65. So as I have already told you from z uh, 0 to 1.65 some value is there so whatever the calculation that we are doing it is uh, concerned with uh, starting from zero but uh, uh, in terms of uh, the sine wave that we are going to obtain should go above this 1.65 so that's the reason it has been added with 1.65 so it will give you will get it as 2.475 now coming to this uh, 2fe as far as uh, the program is concerned we are least concerned about these values we are more concerned about the samples that we are going to put so this is like uh, to calculate what will be the uh, voltage that um, that will be obtained at the output so this is more important 2fe is more important so let us uh, check how the 2fe is obtained so sine 30 is uh, 0.5 or 1, 1 by 2 so <coughs> uh, so we need to find out what is its equivalent value so to find out what is its equivalent value we'll be mul uh, multiplying it with 1ff so 1ff is the equivalent of from here to here in hexadecimal as I've already told you from here to here it is 1 FF and again from here to here it is 1 FF so add, adding together it gives you 3 FF <coughs> in hexadecimal so 1 FF so uh, when you do it with um, uh, divided by 2 always it will it is better to convert this 1 FF to uh, decimal value so when you convert it it becomes 511 and uh, 511 divided by 2 is uh, 255 so it's not exactly 255 it's 254.5 uh, so it is rounded off uh, to 255 sorry 255.5 I'm I have rounded it off to 255 and its equivalent value is 50 uh, sorry f f in hexadecimal value so um, again so whatever the calculation that we have done over here is like from the zero zero voltage to over here so if you directly put the values whatever has been obtained you will get it like this the sine wave will be obtained over here only but we don't want to uh, want the sine wave to appear here we want the sine wave to I mean uh, the positive of cycle to appear here so we'll have to add the value whatever the thing that is available here so that's the reason so FF is added with 1 FF 1 FF is added with the FF so you are getting 2 FE so uh, this is for 30 degree coming to 60 degree sine 60 is 0.866 in the same way whatever we have followed earlier uh, we have to multiply the 1 FF with 0.866 uh, so to do that uh, we will be multiplying converting this 1 FF to uh, 511 because like when you are multiplying it with a fraction it is always better to do it with decimal values and then you can go for uh, <coughs> rounding it off to convert it into its equivalent hexadecimal value that I have done so I have uh, obtained it as 1 BB so again in this case also again I'll have to add 1 FF with this 1 BB so it is obtained as 3 BA <coughs> so 3 BA is like uh, this value so that is for 60 degree so for 90 degree it is simple sin 90 is 1 and obviously it is going to be the maximum value so whatever the reference voltage that we are giving it will be obtained as such so if 3.3 .3 is the reference voltage so uh, when sin 90 is happening the output voltage will be 3.3 .3. so 3.3 .3, its equivalent hexadecimal value whatever you are going to put 
will be obviously it is will be equivalent to the maximum value that is 3 ff then coming to this uh, next 30 degree add 30 degree to this 90 degree that is 120 degree obviously you can see from the waveform so this one is similar to this particular waveform that is like uh, 60 degree is similar to this uh, 120 degree and 30 is similar to this 150 degree and uh, obviously 180 is similar to this 0 degree so uh, there is no ca calculation involved obviously you can copy the values so 120 is equivalent to 60 degree so 60 degree 3 ba we have got and that has been substituted and for 150 it is uh, uh, the equivalent of 30 degree so that is 2 fe that is uh, copied and obviously for 180 degree it is 1 ff then coming to this uh, 210 degree 210 degree uh, I mean sine 210 degree is minus half <coughs> so whatever the value that you are calculating over here <coughs> what you have to do is instead of adding to 1 ff you will be subtracting from 1 ff so uh, the, the same thing so you can see the side 210 is uh, similar to the sine 30 degree half is there instead of half we are putting minus half that is minus 0.5 so multiply minus 0.5 with 511 you'll get uh, uh, 255 so that is minus uh, FFH so 1 FF minus FFH is 100 H so 100 H is the value for sine 210 degree and similarly for uh, sine 240 uh, degree uh, so this is supposed to be sine 240 degree <coughs> It is minus 0.866 and minus 0.866 is multiplied by uh, 1 FFH. Uh, so obviously 1 FF is converted to 511. So you will get it as minus 1 BB and 1 FF minus 1 BB is 44H. And then uh, for sine 270 degree it is like a 0. So the minimum value is chosen for this one that is the negative maximum. Sine 270 is the negative maximum that is uh, this value eventually this is the uh, zero value sine 270 degree after sine 270 degree has been done then 300 is equivalent to 240 degree so whatever the value has been obtained for 44 I mean for uh, sine 240 degree that is 44 is copied to 300 degree and uh, for 330 degree it will be equivalent to uh, 210 degree so 100 H is again copied over here so we have made totally 12 samples <coughs> as of this uh, table is concerned we have made totally 12 samples so uh, this 12 samples we are going to get it as an output so we are not worried about the frequency now so uh, for simplicity we'll just see without the <coughs> without adding the frequency factor so the frequency will be taken care by the uh, internal oscillator frequency so with the oscillator frequency it will uh, generate a waveform so it will be a bit higher frequency closer to maybe 12 megahertz so here um, uh, coming to this program this area and then the label comma code comma read only specifies that this area uh, is having the label of uh, PONN and uh, this is going to be a code and uh, this has to be saved in a read only memory then coming to this uh, assembler directive pencil 0 <coughs> pencil 1 and pencil 2 so as far as this program is concerned pencil 0 is not required and pencil 2 also not required only pencil 1 is enough and uh, uh, when you are uh, putting pencil EQU so I am uh, equating this label with this particular memory address so each and every register inside the ARM processor uh, is connected with a <coughs> memory address so memory address uh, so inside the program we need to access that particular memory uh, register with the memory address only so uh, before accessing it we need to initialize it first so this is the initializing statement pencil 1 equ 0 x e 0 2 c 0 4 is the address of pencil 1 register and dacr <coughs> the digital to unlock converter register so inside the reg this register we are going to put the <coughs> values whatever the samples that we have generated so uh, its um, address is 0x e 6 c 0 so here inside the program will be accessing it through pencil 1 or DACR will not be using this memory address coming to this uh, particular first instruction LDR R1 comma equal to pencil 1 so I am putting this uh, uh, address 0x e 2 c 4 into the R1 register then LDR R2 comma equal to 0x uh, triple zero eight 
zero 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 zero. So this is to activate the uh, <coughs> pencil. Uh, I mean the port uh, uh, port zeros P zero point uh, two five as the as the um, uh, analog output port. So to check the pencil one register, let us check. Uh, <coughs> the uh, lpc i mean uh, lpc 2148's uh, pencil 1 registers uh, content so here p0.25 is associated with uh, a out so to activate this one we need to put 19th bit as 1 and 18th bit as 0 so it starts from 31st bit this is uh, comes as 8421 8421 8421 so it uh, so this is uh, one digit uh, zero uh, second digit zero and third digit zero and uh, coming over here this is made as 1 so it is like 8 so 8 4 2 1 so this is 8 and then the remaining 4 digits we are making it as 0 so that <coughs> in the uh, port 0 P0.25 is connected to the analog output so for that reason we are putting this 8 0 0 0 0 0 so str r2, within brackets r1 so uh, puts this value into this pencil one register so we are, in this three instructions we are doing a single job of uh, putting the uh, i mean uh, making the activating the port p0.25 as a analog output port pin so that is the thing that has been done then we are storing the dacr registers memory address into this r0 register then r3 is stored with the value of 0x 0c <coughs> 0x0c happens to be the uh, total number of count count of uh, um, samples that we have so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 a b c so to total 12 values are there so we have uh, uh, already discussed the how to generate the samples the number of samples is 12 so it's equivalent uh, hexadecimal value is 0c then ldr r4 comma equal to sign data sign data is a label so uh, here what i'm doing is I, i'm using this command align and i'm using this label sign data and uh, i'm using this uh, <coughs> instruction dcd to en to enter the samples inside the program memory itself so that i don't have to give it each and every time when it is required so when uh, i run the program automatically it takes the value from the program memory itself so i'm feeding in the data uh, through this align and sign data so this is out of the program you can see but uh, end should be after this uh, table only so ldr r4 comma equal to sign data it stores the memory address specified by this particular uh, label then ldr r2 comma within brackets r4 so it fetches the value 1ff initially into this r2 register then lsl r1 comma r2 comma hash 6 so logical shift left six times it shifts left and uh, it puts the value into the r1 register so as far as your uh, dacr register is concerned <coughs> uh, you need to know about uh, how its uh, internal structure is so this is the dacr's internal structure you can see 0 to 5th bit is reserved while 6 to 15 bit you will be putting the value and 16 bit is for bias we are not concerned about the bias now so we are not going to change the bias but um, whatever the value that uh, you want as an output should be put between 6th and 15th bit of dacr register so we'll have to avoid this 0 to 5th bit to do that we are uh, left shifting it six times <coughs> So after uh, uh, doing that, what I am doing is I am putting the uh, shifted value that is available in R1 register into the uh, mean memory address specified by R0 register. R0 register has DACR register. Then add R4 comma hash 0x04. So this is all stored inside a 16 bit, uh, sorry 32 bit uh, uh, memory address. So once one um, data has been fetched, so I need to skip, I mean, um, skip to the next memory address so for skipping that i am using this instruction add r4 comma hash 0x04 then i am subtracting the r3 by 1 so r3 value once it is getting subtracted and i am checking whether it has gone to 0 if it is not gone to 0 again i am fetching the data from the next memory address so now 2f will 
F E will be fetched and it will be put inside the uh, DACR register. So again, uh, it will be subtracted by one. So possibly this time it will be uh, from C it would have uh, reduced to B and then um, I mean now it would have been to A. Then again it will go. So it, this happens till the value R three goes to zero. When it has gone to zero again. Uh, it goes to L1. So where I am reinitializing the count of the <coughs> table, the samples that I have created, and I am re reinitializing the R4 with the memory address of starting <coughs> of the lookup table. So again, it goes again and again with the same procedure. So this is the explanation for the program. Now let us check how the program runs. So translate, build, and rebuild. You need to get zero error and zero warning. And uh, start stop debug session. In the logic analyzer, click this setup and uh, uh, click this uh, new button and type A out. So already it will be by default it will show analog so you don't have to change anything don't change it to bit in previous case um, in previous programs we have uh, changed it to bit but as far as this uh, particular program is concerned uh, the output is analog so the type of uh, display type should be selected to analog only and close it now uh, we'll run the program so if it shows like like uh, shading so you just uh, click the zoom in so you can see the waveform of a sine wave that is uh, uh, being created by our program. <coughs> okay, now we'll uh, try to do the sine wave program with 50 hertz supply. I mean, uh, we'll uh, try to get the sine wave with the uh, frequency of 50 hertz <coughs> so this is the program for getting the sine wave with 50 hertz so one thing you'll have to keep it in mind as far as uh, this uh, sine wave is concerned so when uh, you're uh, doing it with uh, hardware circuitry so your startup dot is required so uh, in the previous case also startup dot is uh, required uh, even if uh, you're not concerned about the frequency you need to copy the startup dot yes otherwise what will happen is uh, it won't uh, uh, recognize from where it is fetching and from where it is uh, putting into so memory mapping is required so to do that startup.ds is required so in this case I am going to do it with uh, <coughs> frequency taken into consideration so one thing we'll have to keep it in mind as far as this uh, uh, program is concerned that is the PLL so here PLL uh, CFG underscore OFS should be turned to zero zero so that uh, our uh, frequency <coughs> will be the clock frequency will be fixed at uh, 12 megahertz otherwise it will be I mean uh, by default the value that has been specified in uh, PLL CFG underscore OFS will be making the clock to have 60 megahertz so we don't want 60 megahertz so we'll fix it as 12 megahertz to do that you just change the value of PLL CFG underscore OFS as equivalent to 0x00 so this will make the program to generate uh, I mean uh, uh, it will have the clock frequency as 12 megahertz so that is a one change that you'll have to do so you don't have to uh, I mean uh, make this uh, comments so let uh, this should be there <coughs> Because like uh, while the inter programs we were discussing, we were uh, making all these things as uh, comments, but uh, don't do that uh, with this case. Let this be uh, normal itself. Then coming to this program, this program is uh, similar to whatever we have uh, discussed in the previous case. Again, in this case also, pinzel 0 is not required. Pinzel 1, then DACR. So as I have already told you, so in this case, <coughs> we are going to Con be concerned about the frequency so to do the frequency we need the timer so the whole timer for 50 Hertz for 50 Hertz supply uh, we all know that um, the timing taken will be 20 millisecond for a full cycle so 
for a full cycle if it is 20 millisecond so the total 20 milliseconds has to be divided into <coughs> 12 divisions so if you divide 20 millisecond divided by 12 you'll get it as 1.667 millisecond for individual uh, data so for a one data to be there it, it takes 1.667 milliseconds so to get that 1.667 milliseconds we need the timer so t0 c tcr e, uh, so this is one assembler directive to uh, access this uh, uh, timer register and a T0PR is prescalar register, T0TCR is a timer counter register and T0TC is, uh, um, I mean this T0TCR is basically used for uh, resetting and uh, starting the timer and T0TC will be incremented whenever the T0, um, T, I mean uh, yeah, uh, when T0, uh, TC content will be incremented whenever T0 uh, PC's content uh, matches with T0 PR content. So uh, the same program whatever we have uh, discussed earlier will be using only differences will be including a subroutine for uh, using this BL delay. So you can see almost the same instructions are there LDR R1 comma equal to pin cell 1. So R2 comma equal to 0 x triple zero eight zero 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 zero. So this is for activating the port pin P0.25 as a analog output and DACR register so the number of samples has been specified as a sign I mean C that is 12 and uh, R4 uh, is stored with the sign data address so that is uh, at the last available then uh, so then we are fetching the data from uh, the sign data memory and uh, we are shifting left shifting it uh, six times and storing it in R1 so the content is uh, put inside the DACR register then uh, add it so it points to the next memory address so in the next case so it will be fetching from the next uh, memory address so again after doing this I am calling the delay subroutine so inside the delay subroutine I am uh, putting 0 into T0 C TCR so that uh, the timer activates in the timer mode and T0 PR I am moving a value of 2 so this we will have to keep it in mind 2 will give a timing of 1 microsecond so <coughs> if I want to get 1.667 millisecond so I will give 2 inside T0 PR and the multiples of T0 PR I should make it as 1667 decimal so that I will convert it into hexadecimal so 1667 uh, is the value that I have to put inside the I uh, mean that I will have to compare it with T0 TC <coughs> so T0 TCR and uh, I am making it uh, reset then start using this 2 and 1 and uh, T0 TC um, as I have already told you I will be fetching it using this instruction LDR R2 comma equal to T0 TC the, can, the value is fetched into R6 then I am putting a value of 0683 so this 0683 is equivalent to 1667 so 0683 is in hexadecimal its equivalent uh, decimal value is 1667 since we need 1.667 uh, millisecond we are feeding in with the value of 0683 so the R5 is compared with the fetched value from T0 TC and uh, <coughs> this is again and again is happening so it, this will come out of this loop when the value reaches 1.667 millisecond and after it has come out of the loop so uh, it uh, clears the value of T0 TC and T0 TCR so I am moving the R5 with 0 0 so R5 value is stored inside T0 TC and T0 TCR so that um, um, the timer is cleared and it returns back so again R3 is uh, subtracted then it is checked whether it has uh, gone to zero otherwise it comes over here and uh, repeats the process of fetching the next data so when it has gone to zero it comes out of this loop and uh, it goes into this loop so wherein it reinitializes the r3 and reinitializes the r4 so r3 with the count and r4 with the memory address of the signed data <coughs> So this is the uh, explanation and as we have done in the previous case we will use this align and sign data and this DCD to feed in the samples. So coming to uh, running the program again translate build and rebuild we will have to use then click this one so in logic analyzer same uh, a out you will have to give already we have given that so I am not uh, going to change it so here 
click this A, uh, I mean zoom out so that uh, you can see it because like we have uh, uh, decreased the frequency. So now you can uh, check the values. So we have stopped it. So here we'll check what is the time. So you can see it is almost equivalent to 1.667 the time delay is 1.667 and if you want to check the uh, <coughs> check the time taken you can see that it is 20 millisecond so obviously we have obtained it as 50 hertz 50 hertz supply has been obtained so for uh, doing it with the hardware so we'll have to click this options for target click this output and create this x file and the name of the executable file will be ss and uh, to browse into where this particular file is stored click on this objects so click on this select folder for objects you can see that it is experiment uh, 14 in this case so here it will be stored so again you'll have to click translate build and rebuild so in case if you want to check you can check it as ss.hex is created so this hex file you can dump into the board to get the sine wave so from the board we need to see from uh, where we have to obtain the output so p0.25 is the port pin that we are concerned with so from here uh, port pin P0.25 uh, you can see P0 underscore 825 so P0 underscore 825 is obtained in the J1 9th pin between 9th and 6th you need to connect to get the output <coughs> so this is the explanation let us uh, do the hardware connection this is going to be the program that I am going to dump inside the processor. So as we have done earlier, options for target I will get into and click the output. So here I will have to click this create hex file, then select folder for options and to check where it is getting saved. So ss.hex will be saved inside this objects folder. So I will click this translate, build and rebuild and to check it once again I will click here output. So you can see uh, ss.hex is uh, created. So this file I will uh, dump into the processor using this uh, hash magic. So LPC2148 has to be kept, COM port COM1 and the baud rate is 9600, interface is uh, non ISP and uh, oscillator it is a uh, 12 megahertz frequency and erase all flash and verify after programming you should check then options, advanced options, hardware config, you check these two buttons and T1 and T2 should be 100 and 200 milliseconds respectively and time modes, also this one also you just check it then I'll browse and uh, uh, inside the folder objects, ss.hex, click open and I'll connect the RS232 board and I'm clicking the start so now you can see the code is getting dumped then I will remove this one and I will connect the uh, pins in uh, 9th and 6th so 9th I will be connecting the positive while in the 6th I will be connecting the negative so this is the EAO and you can see the sine wave that is being created generated so this is uh, without the frequency constraint so and the next is we will see with the 50 hertz uh, frequency we will generate a sine wave with 50 hertz frequency pass in this case again this is the program for uh, uh, sine wave with 50 hertz frequency again I am doing the same operation in the output click this create x file I am creating with the same uh, executable name as ss.hex and it is in the folder of objects so I am running this translate build and uh, rebuild again so my hex file would have been created and again here the LPC2148, COM1, 9600, none ISP and 12 has to be checked and verify after programming, it is all flash, should be checked, options, advanced options, hardware context should be, these two buttons should be checked, T1 and T2 should be 100 and 200 milliseconds respectively. So I can browse and click this ss.x, click ok, now I am starting to dump. So, I need to connect first RS-232 
then I will have to dump. So it is getting dumped now. And I will remove the RS232. Now you can uh, see over here. The sine wave is created with the uh, 50 hertz frequency. You can see over here. See over here. The 50 hertz frequency has been generated. You see 5 millisecond, 5 millisecond for single box. You can see two boxes comprises the half cycle. So uh, 50 millisecond, sorry, uh, 10 millisecond is for half cycle, and uh, totally for full cycle it takes 20 millisecond. So 50 hertz of uh, frequency of uh, sine wave we have generated successfully. So this is the procedure. Thank you. Thank you.